this is a year of perfection. This is a year of excellence. When you go home, take Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 47. I was challenged by the same thing by the Holy Spirit. Talk to God. Tell him, Lord, speak to me. I need your word. I need your presence. Yes, Holy Spirit, we are calling up on your presence again right now. Come and speak to us, O oh Most High God. Father, in this journey of 2023, we need your help. Speak to us.
twice. The glory of God is God himself. God is his glory. When the, when the glory of God dwells, there God is. God is here. Hallelujah. No more better, but you know, Peniel means God face to face. Seeing face to face. Oh, I pray for you to see God face to face. I pray for you to see God face to face. Peniel means the entrance of heaven. It's just an entrance. But Peniel means God face to face. Meaning that I'm with him already. I've left the door a long time ago. I've knocked all those years. Now he said, Odi, you can come now. The door is open. Come, Karibu, enter now. The doors are open. Hallelujah. Doors are open. You can enter in the presence of God. Somebody said, No more better. Peniel now. No more better. Peniel now. Hallelujah. You may have a seat. God bless you. It's my pleasure. To welcome you in this. Is this the first Sunday? Yes. Wow. Technically, it's the second Sunday. Praise God. Because the first Sunday was the first of January 2023. Amen. We thank God for His goodness and His mercy, and we thank God for renewing the good health to you all of us, to all of you who went to see your beloved one, your families in your villages, and uh, in your town, in your cities, and now you are back, I'm saying welcome to all of you. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the word of God in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. <clears throat> this January, we will revolve around this scripture. The Bible says, this is the Lord Jesus who is speaking to his disciples. And um, I believe he's extending this speaking to you this morning. He says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. He said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I believe that every word that Jesus said were waged word. And if he said it, it is because it is possible. If he says those words, it is because they are feasible. Because if it was not, he wouldn't say that. So perfection is feasible in this earth. It is feasible because he said it. If he knew that it was not possible, he wouldn't say it. But because he said it, it means that it is feasible. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, I want you and me to do a bit of exercise. If you take Matthew chapter 5, Verse 1 until verse 47. Verse 1 to verse 47. The Lord Jesus started to speak to his disciple about the quality of a perfect man. He started, you know, I didn't know how important is Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 is so important, my brother. Read it, go read it again. Then you'll see how valuable is Matthew chapter 5. Now he's saying that he started by telling them about the beatitude. He started telling them, blessed are the meek because they will inherit this. Blessed are this because they will receive this. He started telling them about the birth, about a perfect man. And then he continues and speaks to them about a Christian as a salt and the light of the world. Speaks to them about the Christian as the salt and the light of the world. And he goes further. <clears throat> he speaks to them about keeping the word of God or breaking the word of God. He is telling them that a good or a perfect man shall keep the word of God. And he went further. Speaks to them about <clears throat> the relationship with their neighbors. He speak to them about love or love of others or love of neighbors. He goes further and speak to them about sexual purity and marriage. He speaks to them about marriage and he speaks to them that 
Divorce, it is not in the initial plan of God. He goes further and he speaks to them about the vows that you do to God. So in other way, he painted first what according to him perfect man that is going to talk to them in verse 48 is. He gave them an example. He told them first how a man shall be. How a perfect man shall be. How a man according to God a human being, a Christian, according to Jesus, should be. So if you want to see how a Christian should be, according to Jesus, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 47. This is the man that Jesus is expecting. After telling them about all those things, in verse 48, now he said, therefore. He said, therefore. In other words, he said, for these reasons above, for what I've said above, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. You see, <clears throat> sorry, if the Lord Jesus just came and started his statement by saying be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, it could have been a bit difficult. Because they wouldn't know which perfection he was speaking about. But before them to go and tell them be perfect, he started painting for them who is a perfect man. Just, just for the sake of you understanding. Let me quickly go to Matthew chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 3. Let me start verse 1 for the beauty of the story. The Bible said, <clears throat> Now then Yeshua saw the crowd. He went up on a mount mountainside and sat down. His disciples, his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them. He began to teach them. Actually, the lesson of that day was titled Perfection. The lesson of that day was titled Be Perfect Like Your Heavenly Father is Perfect. But for him to start by perfection, he started by painting for them who is perfect or what is perfection. Now, he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. So according to God, a perfect man is speaking to, is speaking about, is a man who's poor in spirit. Now poor in spirit doesn't mean a poor man who's lacking money. But it means a man who is always in need of God. Who always need God all the time. Who always thinks that I don't have enough of God. That is a poor man. Who always have a hand that, you know, stretch to God to receive something. So he's saying this, now, and he continues, he says, the poor in spirit, why? Because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. He goes on verse 4. He said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So according to Jesus, those who are mourning because of pain, they don't complain, but when they do something to them, they go to the Lord and they mourn. They say, God, do something. These are the perfect people. Not the people who always are having the strength of vengeance. You think me that is? It's fine. Wait my turn. You know, when somebody starts telling you in the conversation, remember the world is turning, is having already the thought of vengeance. He said, Don't worry, the, the, the table is turning. Why do you want the table to tell? For you to have also the opportunity to punish. But the Bible says, blessed are those who mourn. <clears throat> he goes further, <clears throat> my sorry. He goes further and he says, blessed are the meek, for they will, they will inherit earth. So he is giving them for him who is a perfect man. So you as a Christian, you must have all these things. You must be poor in spirit. You must mourn. You must be meek. You must be hunger of righteousness. You, are, you can read all those things. So he painted for them who is the man that he was speaking about. And then he said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. So do yourself a favor. When you go home, because this is a year of perfection. This is a year of excellence. When you go home, take Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 47. I was challenged by the same thing by the Holy Spirit. Read it and put yourself into it. 
See how much you are fitting onto it. <laughs> how much you are fitting. Hallelujah. Now, in verse 48, he's telling them, therefore, be perfect. Now, he tell them, be perfect, meaning, be everything that I say above. If you are everything that I say above, you are just perfect like your heavenly father is perfect. Our heavenly father has all those things. So, be perfect. So, my message this morning is titled excellence. So, I want us to go a little bit around excellence. To learn a little bit about that. Because God has given us the theme of the year that we should excel in everything we do. And what does it mean? Because for us to excel, we need to have understanding. Actually, the key of excellence, we'll learn it later, it is knowledge and understanding. We'll learn it later. So it is important for you to understand this word. Understand it for you to not go aside of God or what God did prepare for us this year. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is excellence? Excellence is the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. What is excellence? Excellence is the quality of being outstanding. Meaning, you are above the average. You are above everyone. When they look at you, you are not like anyone. You are special. So excellence is being is being outstanding. Is being above. Is being extremely good. Now I want you to get that because as we are going to go further, you will understand even more. Now perfect. What is perfect? Perfect or perfection? I like it. Perfection is having all the required or desirable element of quality. Let me say that again. Perfection or perfect is having in you all the required or desirable element of quality or characteristic. So when they say this is perfect, it means there is nothing else to add on it. I get it. When I say perfect, it means that it's okay. There's nothing else to add. It is complete. It is okay. When I say it is perfect, it means that there is nothing to remove. There is nothing to add. So that is perfection. So perfection or perfect means also absolute and complete. When I say perfect, it means that it's complete. When you are doing something, I say, I say, okay, perfect. What do you do? Do you continue? You stop. It means that, according to me, whatever you are doing has satisfied all the requirement for it to be okay for you to stop. I get it. So when we are speaking about perfection or we are speaking about excellence, we are saying a outstanding quality, outstanding. Not among, not confused with everyone, but outstanding. When you are you are having outstanding achievement, it means that it is not achieved, it's not an achievement which is common to everyone. You have been above the common. Are you getting your already? You are not only a common, you are above the that's why you are having outstanding. And when you are above the common, you say you are excellent. Excellent, perfect, it means that it is okay. There is nothing to add. Now, maybe let's go to the word, that word, perfect in Hebrews. Then you will even understand better. In Hebrew, this word perfection, in this um, verse of uh, being perfect in Hebrew, the word perfect is tamam or kalal. So, tamam in Hebrew means wholeness, means integrity, means completeness. I want you to follow me very well. Then you'll, you'll understand the beauty of the word of God. So, this word, perfect in Hebrew, it comes from the word tamam or kalal. That means 
oneness in terms of everything that is okay. You know, there is nothing broken, there is nothing missing, there is nothing lacking, oneness. It means integrity and it means completeness. So when in Hebrew they were speaking about tamam, if they said tamam, they were also referring to ethical significance, something which is ethical, morally good. Are you getting me? Morally perfect. So that is tamam or kalal. Now, listen to the bit of this. So God is saying to us that uh, who shall be tamam, who shall be kalal, meaning we shall have integrity or we shall have it in integrity and we shall have it complete. Complete. So when you're speaking to them, be perfect as your father is perfect, you want them to tell them, be complete as your father is complete. Be in integrity. You see, when you take this microphone, it is in integrity, meaning it is functional. Because it has everything that is required for the microphone to work. If I remove, if I remove batteries, this it is it's still a microphone, but it has lost its integrity. Are you getting me? If I remove the batteries, it will lose its integrity. Or if I, I, I remove any parts of it. No matter how small it can be, if I remove every part of this microphone, it will not gonna be in integrity anymore. Either in terms of aesthetic of looking at it, it will look, it will no longer look like a microphone anymore, or in its functionality, it's not gonna look as a microphone anymore. So, for in order for it to be a microphone. In terms of his aesthetic of a microphone and in terms of his functionality, the microphone must have all its part. If I remove the cover, I can still talk with it. But when you look at it, you see, you know why? Because it has lost the integrity. It means it has lost the perfection. It means it has lost the Excellence. Now, when the Spirit of the Lord in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, he is speaking about the fruit of the Spirit. I want you to put it for us here. You know, the Word of God is wonderful. The Bible says that, but the fruit of the Spirit is. The Bible never says the fruit of the Spirit are. He said, the fruit of the Spirit is. But when he start now enumerating, there are many things we are seeing there. Joy had, joy had nothing to be with forbearance. Kindness had nothing to do with faithfulness. You see, all those things, now when he starts speaking about the fruit, instead of making the fruit in plural, he makes the fruit in singular. Because Behind his mind, he was looking at the completeness or the excellence or the perfection. Amen. So a person who is perfect must not only have love without joy. Yeah. Or must not only have joy without peace. Or must not only have forbearance without kindness. Yeah. Or goodness without faithfulness. Amen. Or faithfulness without gentleness. Or gentleness without self-control. So when you are in perfection, you must have them all as a whole. A wholeness. A completeness. So when you say be perfect, these are the element of your perfection. Remember, when I told you, Jesus started by telling them about how it should be. When you look at God, how it should be when you look at yourself, and how it should be when you look at your neighbor. He told them in from verse 1 of Matthew chapter 5 to verse 47. He told them all those things. Now, here the Apostle Paul, pushed by the Spirit of God, he said the fruit of the Spirit. If the Spirit of God is in somebody, he will now live this life. Not by having one, but by being in, in 
integrity. Let me tell you, there are many Christians who have lost integrity. You know why? Because we are no longer one. We are no longer a wholeness. We have lost integrity. I'm a joyful person, but yet I do not have kindness. Is it possible? It's like a microphone, but does not have batteries. It is a microphone, but it does not have a mat a, 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 I mean, a batteries. So that microphone, it is not complete. Therefore, if we should say, is a microphone perfect or not, we should say, it is not perfect. So when God looks at us, and he sees that you are a joyful person, but you do not have goodness, you do not have kindness, you don't have self-control. When God looks at you, he's seeing that you are not yet perfect. You are not yet complete. There are things in you, but God wants you to be complete. Now you see when the Bible says, be or He said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Be kalal. Be tamam. As your heavenly father is tamam. You want to tell them. Be complete. Have all of it in integrity. Do not lose part of it. Christianity of today, we are having things, but we don't have other things, and it doesn't bother us. Somebody said, but pastor, I've done something. At least I have love. Even though I don't have goodness, but I said I have love. Oh, pastor, I still, at least I'm a peaceful man. No, God is not expecting you to have to have those things without others. He's expecting you to be in integrity. Amen. He's expecting you to be complete. And it is impossible for you to have only one without the others because they are produced by the same spirit. Amen. You can't say I have love. And the spirit of love which is in you is unable to produce in you joy. Is unable to produce in you peace of your parents, or kindness, or goodness, or faithfulness, or self-control. The spirit of God in you will produce those things. Amen. Now, look even the craziness of what I've learned in the word of God. When God is speaking about integrity, it means something which is integrity. Which does not lost anything. Okay? And other way, it's something which is one. You see? This microphone is what? Is one. It is complete. It is a microphone, but in it, it has a lot of things. But it is one. When I lift it up, I lift it as one. Now, the Spirit of the Lord made me understand. Integrity means also oneness. And oneness is the same thing with holiness. You know why? That's why now Israel, when they pray, they start praying God. They always say, listen, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. It's when God is in integrity. It doesn't change. If you come to see God, if you saw God 10 years ago, and you see God now, and you come 10 years later to see God, God will remain in integrity. Amen. He remain the same. It doesn't change. He is in integrity. That's why he's holy. That's why he's aside. Because him, he doesn't change. He, you, you, he can't change. He is in integrity. So you, as a child of God, God is calling you, he said, be in integrity like your heavenly father is in that's why he said, be holy as I am. Amen. You see, I was thinking that be holy, it, it just doesn't mean don't do things, but it means be complete. Amen. Be complete at all times as your heavenly father is complete. You can't say, no, today I'm, I'm a bit angry. Oh, my brother, I'm so sorry. You know, you, you found me in a very bad moment. I was a bit, I was a bit. And then I come two, two hours later. Ah, are you okay now? No, I know I'm okay. No. God is not like that. God, if you find him in the morning, he is in integrity. You come in the midday, he is in integrity. You go in the afternoon, he is in integrity. But what is happening with us? When they see us in the morning, 
When everything is okay, I smile. When they come and find me in the midday, when I went through all the pain of the day, I'm angry. I don't give anymore. I don't, what going on with you? Because the Bible says, be as your father is. How is your father? Your father is in integrity. Your father is in integrity. He is one. He is holy. He doesn't change. He does, there is nothing that changes in him. Now, integrity or kalal that we spoke about or um, tamam what we spoke about or perfection you can't learn to become perfect. It's impossible. You cannot say, let me do some effort for me to become perfect. It doesn't come by effort. Perfection comes by nature. You cannot take a bottle. See this bottle? Let me try to turn it into a microphone. It's not possible. If you have already born a bottle, you are a bottle. I can't turn you to a microphone unless there is a new birth. Unless we go back to the, the, to the manufacturer and manufacture the energy that we use to make a bottle to change that energy to make a microphone. So that's why for you to become perfect, it is about the nature. It is not about an effort. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people in the church. In this century church, we have people who are doing a lot of effort for them to become good. But they are unable. Because it is not about your effort. If you do effort, maybe you can learn to have forbearance. You can do a bit of effort. Maybe you can bring a bit of kindness. But you will never be complete. Because it is not about you do the effort. It is about you having the nature of completeness. Your na the nature of tamam. Oh, come with me in the book of First John, chapter 5, verse 1, and First Peter, chapter 1, verse 23. First John, chapter 5, verse 1. First John, chapter 5, verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God. Remember, what we are saying perfection, or what we are saying excellence, is the quality we are taking from God. It belongs to God. So for us to take it from God, we need not only to learn it from God because it is impossible, we need to get it from God as a nature. We need to get it from God as a nature. The Bible says that those who believe in Jesus, John chapter 1 verse 1, those who believe in him, those who have received him, he gives them the power to become children of God. And John chapter 3 verse 3, uh, uh, verse 3 and go to 6, the Lord Jesus is speaking about the new birth. So if you are born again, if you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are born of God. You are born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves the children. Now, come to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. We are born from God not by coming to church. Not by belonging to a church. You know, there are people that do understand. He did all his effort to belong to a certain church. Well done. To belong to a department in the church. To belong to, you know, a service in the church. But this is not enough to change your nature. It can't change your nature. Not to have seen people that are in the church, but they are still he's struggling with things in him. Even if he doesn't do that, but he knows that they are still inside. Because inside is not a change. The nature is not a change. Peter is saying that, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of unperishable seed. Through what? Through the living and enduring word of God. So a person gets born again by receiving the word of God. If you haven't received the word of God, you just follow the father, you just follow the mother, or you just follow the husband, the church, chases 
that you will not gonna get the change or the nature of God are very high. Because you get that nature by his word. When you receive the word of God, you receive Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, it gives you the power to be born again in the spirit. Now, when you are born again, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, when we are born from God of his unperishable word, he transmits to us something. He transmits to us a part of himself. He transmits to us his nature. Beloved, when I give my life to Jesus, before I went to give my life to Jesus, I was so naughty. So naughty that I was telling myself, if I continue to live this, like this, in the next two, three years, I will die. Because myself, I, I could see that this, what I'm doing at this age is too much. I was 13, 14. But what I was doing at that age, when I come back home, I say, hey, this one, I don't think that I will live 20. I must die. Because I will die. Then somebody came to tell me about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was asking that person, how will I be able to stop doing that habit that I had? Of doing whatever dirty things that I was doing. I asked him, what? How will I be able? You know, I want to follow, but I'm afraid of myself. I know I'm going to fail just now, now. I know it's not going to be possible now, now. I can see how beautiful it is, that life, but by, I, I can see that I won't be able to do it. You know, bless be that brother. He told me something, something that encourages my life. He told me, listen. All you need to do is the first step. Just do the first step of receiving Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. The 99 other steps, Jesus will do those steps. Amen. Beloved, that word encourages me. And I gave my life to Jesus. I can't tell you how surprised I was to see that after receiving Jesus, two days later, I did not go to those things. A week later, nothing happened. A month later, nothing happened. And then one time, one time I realized, that, uh, it's one year, nothing has happened. And then like, two years, and then three years, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was like, wow, it is possible. It is possible because you have received a new nature. Amen. It was no longer bothering me because it was no longer in me. The Bible said that through this, he has given us his great and precious promises so that through them you may do it. Participate in the divine nature. Now you are participating in the divine nature. The problem we are having today in the church, people are not born again. People belong to churches but they never get born again. People preach the gospel but they're not born again. People lead prayers, but they're not born again. People pray for other people, but they're not born again. There is a woman who used to sing, let me not say her name. She was a South African, she's late already. She used to sing, sing the gospel. She will sing here, she will sing at a, um, a Botswana. Sing the gospel, and, and most of you, you know his, her songs. But she started singing when she was not born again. She went into the TV, into the, a TV show at SFBC 1 or 2, I can't remember. They asked her, somebody asked her, are you born again? She said, what? Born again, what is that? She didn't know. She was singing the gospel. She was singing about Jesus. She didn't know that she can be born again. Then she asked, what does it mean that? It bothered her. And then after the, after the TV show, she went to ask her. That question you ask me, oh, I'm in trouble. What are you talking about? They presented to her that you need to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Then he will transform and change you so that you can have his life. Amen. Say, the life of God. But I'm singing for him. He said, no, you are singing for him, but you're not having your life, his life. You're having your own life. That's why we, when we live here, we go outside, we do our things. We don't even think about God. And there are people who've been having the cut to put it on their on their what? Status. 
You see her there, she will, will be up there in the, oh, we are here, we are here. We, you are, we, you, I understand the problem with you, you are not born again yet. You are just showing your nature. Because if you are born again, if the nature of God is you, you will only display the nature of God. If I see you on the status with the dog, you're, you're with the dog, woo -hoo, and the dog goes, woo -hoo, and then you go, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. I might believe that you might be a dog. Maybe you're coming here when you're here, you stand up. And then you walk like us, but in reality, there is a dog in you. That's why you live with the dog, and you, you are not even feeling ashamed to put on your status when you are together with your dog, because this is your nature. I'm sorry, it might be hurtful, but I need to tell you things that did that way. Amen. You go there because you have their nature. Mm -hmm. You are comfortable there because you have their nature. Mm -hmm. If you were not having their nature, you wouldn't be comfortable there. You are uncomfortable when we take long in the church. You know there are people here when you are, there, you are telling me, you look at the, the back, the watch. And if, if I'm not stopping, then he will, he will show me. The so pastor is time. I've given you enough time. This is not my nature. This is not my place. I want to go where I am my nature. When you are dead, coconut, you have been praying for four, four, four hours to come at six hours. Beloved, God wants us to be born again, to have his nature. Because what he's telling us to do, that perfection, it will not gonna come if we do not have his nature. If we're doing the effort, it is not about doing the effort, it's about having that nature first. You see, when you have that nature, you're not gonna do an effort. I told you the other day, when a baby is born, he is complete. When the baby is born, he is all he needs is time to grow. He will walk. If you see a baby crawling, don't laugh. Don't say, oh, this baby. But he's a baby. Give him time. He won't crawl. Give him time. He won't try to walk. Give him time. He will walk. Give him time. He will reproduce. Because it is in his nature. You see, if you have the nature of God, even if you can fail now, there's not a problem. Because you're just a baby. You're just a baby. Now you can do all those funny things. It's okay. You're just a baby. We just need to give you time. Okay? You will grow. But you since we gave you time to grow. <laughs> we have been looking at this baby with big teeth. It does not take milk anymore. It's even chewing. Mara. Stand up. He can't stand. Just sitting there. This is the problem with you, my brother. You've been a child of God for so many years. But there's no change in your life. You've been a child of God for so many years. There's no completeness. God doesn't mind you being a child and doing wrong things. He's speaking about that. That's why he called himself the father. Because when you are a child, he can accept things. He told Peter, he said, Peter, when you were a child, you were doing whatever you want, but when you come and not doubt, things will change. Amen. Apostle Paul said, when I was a child, I was doing things like a child. But now that I'm a not doubt, I need to do things like an adult. Amen. I need to take decisions. When you were a child, they were feeding you. Mm -hmm. When you become an adult, you must feed yourself. You must go and look for your food. Amen. We don't give you food anymore. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Stop being this big adult who always depend on your parent. Mm -hmm. You are depending on your parent and you are even saying, Papa, I want to get married. You depend on you to get married. Are you crazy? Something wrong with you? You know, there's things we're asking to God. God said, but you're still a baby. I can't lend them to you because you won't handle them. You're going to mess up those things. You're going to hurt yourself. Father, I need a knife to cut this. I can't give you a knife. After cutting yourself, you must cut your finger. Because we're still a child. There are things we're not receiving from God because we are not mature anymore. Amen. Not yet. Beloved, do you have God's nature? Amen. If you have God's nature, then where is, where is your completeness? 
Where is your dala? Mm. Where is your tamam? Mm. Where is it? Where is your completeness? We are suffering because we have Christians who have kara. They have things, but they don't have other things. They show we come. When we arrive, they stab us because they did not have it complete. We go. Yesterday I was with somebody, one of my friends were telling me, Pastor, now where should we go? All the pastors are becoming complicated. <laughs> if I go to this church, pregnancy to the child. We go to this church, this to my wife. We go to this. Where to go now? Beloved, you know why? It's because of people who are not come up. We are not complete. People come to us. They trust us. Because maybe they show love. They saw love in us. Then they run when they saw that love. They thought that as they're coming to us, they will find also kindness. But because we are not complete, kindness did not come out. We, we show a signs of love, but when people came close to us, hatred came in. Jesus said, how come the same source can it produce gold and bitter water at the same time? How come that you're producing at the same time gold and bitter water? Then there's a problem with our source. And Jesus said, you can't serve two masters at the same time. You know, you love one and you hate another one. You know, be faithful to one and unfaithful to the other one. Then there's a problem, brothers and sisters. Today, There's somebody told me there was a, a man of God who was pastor for so many years. Pastor in a church until one day a gospel was preached to him. He came in front. He said, I preached, but I've never been born again. I didn't know what is it. My life was just my life. I didn't know what does it mean to surrender to Jesus Christ. I didn't know what is it to be born again, to be transformed from the inside. You see, when you are doing wrong, and you feel absolutely nothing. Yeah? You do wrong. And you feel absolutely nothing. It means you are not absolutely a child of God. you feel nothing. If you are able to listen to the dogs, you will sit together and then we see you laughing. <laughs> then what are laughing? <laughs> this dog is saying to the other dog there. It means something, we have something in common with them. So you see why they like those things? Because we have something in common with them. We like those things because we have something in common with them. But if we become uncomfortable, it means that we have nothing in common. That's why I become uncomfortable. If I sin, because it's possible for us to sin, that's why there was a provision of confession. Because we're human beings, we can sin. I am not saying that if you are a child of God, you cannot sin. It's possible you can sin. But sin is no longer your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Sin it is an accident. Mm -hmm. Sin is something that happened that you did not plan. Mm -hmm. It is not that you wake up in the morning, okay. Preparing now. You need to sin today. <laughs> and after sinning, you come back home. Easy. And tomorrow you come back to sing. Easy. No problem. You take a microphone. You take a hallelujah. Nothing in you. It means that there is no spirit of God. In you. Amen. Because when we sing, we make the spirit of God to become sad. And because the spirit of God is in us, he will communicate to us the sadness. I don't know if when you sing you are sad. When you sing you are happy. Nice. <laughs> Tomorrow again. You should be uncomfortable because it is not your nature. If you are comfortable, it means that your nature has not changed. And my assignment this year, I need to take you to Tamam. So that you may become complete and have the nature of God. To become complete by having the nature of God. For you to change. For you to transform you. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that everything will change that same day because we'll go to through the steps being a baby and growing up, but don't remain a baby for forever. You must change. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 
When we have the nature of God, the nature of God must manifest in us. The nature of God must express itself in us. How does the nature of God express itself in us? How does the tamam, the perfection, the kalau, the excellence is expressed in us is through obedience. Obedience to what? Obedience to the word of God. Come with me. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 22. And then Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians 3, 5. So, we manifest the nature of God through obedience. If you don't obey God, we're not going to see the nature of God in you. The nature of God will be expressed by your obedience to the word of God. Not only the written word of God, but also the inspiration of the word of God God is telling you. Now, now that you have purified yourself, how? By obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other. So, how will you purify yourself? To purify yourself to become holy, to become in integrity. How do you purify yourself? By obeying the word of the truth. Bible said, now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth. So, obeying God, it's expressed, it shows, it purifies, it shows the nature of God in us. I will never know that you are a child of God if there is no obedience in your life. You can tell me, you know, me, I'm a child of God. I pray to many baptisms. I've been close to the pastor. Like we had a brother here. We used to say, me, I'm close to the pastor. I drive the pastor. Driving the pastor, it is not a proof that you are having the nature of God. Amen. What shows that you have the nature of God is your obedience Amen. to the truth. Amen. And no, the true obedience, it is not when you obey around people who knows you who can come to accuse you to church here. Yeah. But obedience is when you are in Cape Town. You are in Deben. You know, beach. Look left, look right. Nobody knows me here. I'm okay. I relieve myself. There must be obedience. Obedience is when you are alone in that corner where nobody sees you. You are given the choice of obeying God and disobeying God. And you rather choose to obey God. That is obedience. The people who look at you will see, ah, this is the child of God. He has God's nature. Hallelujah. Amen. We will not know that you're a child of God until challenges come. You'll never know your nature until you are challenged. You see, when we were small, they were giving us this small story of this lion who wore a cloth of a lamb and he was walking with the lamb and the lamb, everything was fine until one day one lamb fell and get cut and the lamb bled. As he was bleeding all of them were coming oh, oh, oh but him Directly the nature came out. And instead of compacting, he licked the blood. Because it is his nature. Beloved, you can hide yourself. One day, your nature will go out. In a way that you're not going to expect, it will go out. That's why the Bible says that Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. The Bible says something there. Colossians 3, 5. Look what the Bible says. Can, can you read with me? The Bible says, put to death. In other version, kill. In other way, assassinate. In other way, slaughter. Kill what? Whatever belongs to your earthly nature. The Bible says what? Is the Bible say, let it sleep? The Bible say, just put it aside. No. The Bible say what? Kill. When something is killed, it is 
it is gone. It is forgotten. It is it's not going to have any action or any influence. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 that those who are dead, they have no more influence in what is happening on them. You see, our problem is we have things we did not kill. There are things we put to sleep. There are things we put to sleep because you don't have job and, and yet. Sexual immorality in you is just sleeping. Because there's no money. Nowadays, who get, I would get laid without money. When you come and ask, but do you have money, Papa? <laughs> I met another woman. She told me, Pastor, me, when I look at a man, I look at three things. I said, okay, what are those things? She said, first of things, I look at the watch. Which kind of watch is wearing? And the second one, I look at the belt. Which kind of belt is heavy? And the last time, I look at the foundation. Which kind of shoes? When I look at the shoes, I say, okay. Yeah, money is here. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Love, be careful. You can have all those things, but nothing. Amen. They can be borrowed things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love said, put to death. How do you put to death? Just by changing the nature. You can't put to death and still be alive. Yeah. That's why Jesus today must assassinate you. He must kill you. Kill your own nature, I mean. Don't go and report me. I don't want to kill people here. I'm saying your old nature must die. The, must, the old you must die. Apostle Paul said, if somebody is in the class, you have been killed. He said it. Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. He said, if somebody is in the Christ, he is a new creation. All the things, all of things has passed away. And everything are new. So are your old things passed away or not yet? The Bible says, put to death. Look at in your life. What is not yet dead? If that thing is still there, it's preventing your completeness. I mean, it's preventing your perfection, your excellence. You are not yet excellent because it is that thing which is still alive. You are okay everywhere. But when it comes to anger, you know, people, when they get angry, they become terrible. Even the husband know. When he's, she's angry, you take the children, put in the car, they lock the door, they wait. He breaks everything, and then they come back. My brother, that thing, Your life. Kill them. Jesus said, if your eye is a cause of you to sin, do what? Break that eye. You better go as a blind, one eye blind in the kingdom of God. I mean, he just want to say, you better lose the benefit of certain things for the kingdom of God. You better be called that you are a coward, my friend, but you are a coward, you accept to be a coward because you want to honor God. People can call you a coward. I'm here. You're not doing anything to be a coward. Say, oh, it's okay. But I prefer to enter in the kingdom of God being called a coward than to sin against God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For you to manifest the nature of God, it's required a personal decision, a commitment to obey the truth of going to show the holiness, the perfection and the excellence. Excellence it is in you, but it must go out by obedience to the word. And God will put you in a situation where you should express your obedience. Let me finish by this. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22, Samuel is telling King so that God prefer obedience more than sacrifices. We like to sacrifice God. Look at what I've done. Look at all the power I went through. But you are not obedient to God. <laughs> obedience must come before service. You can't serve God if you are not an obedient child. You can't show God's nature if you're not obedient. 
For God's nature is shown by the obedience. If I obey God, it shows that I have God's nature. So obey God. If I don't obey God, I can say whatever I want. No, you know, you must understand me. I'm uh, this age. I'm not, no. If there is no obedience to the word of God, there is nothing. This morning, there are some people that I'm going to shoot to kill them because of their old nature. We're going to kill the old nature to allow the nature of God to take place. We want to walk in perfection. We want to excel, not to go into excellence. But there are certain areas of your life that you need to kill. There are certain doors of your life that you need to shut. There are certain activities of your life that you need to stop. There are certain things that you used to do last year that this year you need to stop because it doesn't show God's nature. I want you to look at yourself. Remember, God did not come this morning to condemn you. He came this morning because he wants to save you. Because he wants you to become like him to enter into the Taman, into the Kala, to have his nature, to be like him, complete, in integrity, in perfection, in excellence. Excellence is just not gonna come just like that. It's required you to do something. You need to kill certain things and you need to get other things from the Lord. Can you rise up on your feet? On your feet so that you can pray. Thank you, Lord. I am going to have two calls this morning. We are at the beginning of the year. It is possible to make things different from last year. Don't continue with the same things that you did and didn't work. Maybe they need to be changed. My first call is for the people who never made Jesus their personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you have been coming to church, you have been even serving, but you never said to Jesus, Lord, I'm stopping here. I want you to enter my life, to forgive my sins, to become the Lord and the Savior of my life, to take over my life and to lead me. Maybe you never done that. Don't feel ashamed. This is your opportunity. We did that ourselves. If you are here and you never given your life to Jesus, then have our eyes closed. Tell him. If you are here, raise up your hands. I want to help you. We must kill that old nature. We must kill that nature. If you are here, you never call Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It is done. You can just raise your hand as you are having our eyes closed. You can lift up your hand and I'm going to help you. It is possible to belong to a church and not to belong to the body of Christ. To belong to a choir and not to belong to Jesus. Thank you. Now say this after me, Lord Jesus. I open my heart. I'm inviting you. Come into my life. Forgive my sins and I repent from them. From today, write my name in your book of life. Give me your spirit. In Jesus' name, I am born again. That simple prayer, my brother, my sister, we did it also. And our life will change. We will change by the same. Remember we said the word of God is that what changes you. The uncorruptible seed. Now my second plea will go to you who have been around a child of God but there are certain things that you need to change life. You know there are certain areas of your life the old nature is still alive. You know yourself. 
You are a child of God, but there are certain areas you're still battling with. Those things are still alive. We are going to come back to Him. And I believe many are here. I want you to pray. You know, I want you to break that thing by making the devil to feel ashamed. If you are here and there is something that is bothering you that you want to change this year, please raise up your hands. By raising up your hand, I also showed Jesus that, Lord, I did not feel ashamed. There is something that I need to fix with you. Let your hand be up. Thank you. Thank you for those who are having their hand up. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm waiting for you. If you think that you are, you are having already the kalal, the perfection, it's fine. But if you're here, there's something that you need to change. Let your hand be up. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. You know me better than myself. And you have seen this area of my life where I am struggling. I am not yet dead on that area. My old nature still demands me. But this morning, I came before you by the power of your word. Let the old nature die in me. Die in me. In the name of Jesus. That area of my life still controlled by my old nature. Be changed now. Controlled by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Father, I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I will do things better. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now you need to understand that area. You need obedience. And if you are struggling, you can even see any of the leader or see the pastor so that you can pray together. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it is lie. Maybe it is whatever. It is possible. Remember, he said, be perfect. As your heavenly father is perfect. Be kalal. As your heavenly father is kalal. It is possible. Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen.